Okay, now we're going to do the uh, midpoint rectangular approximation method. Now we did this on example one. It, it was quite complicated because we did have quite a few uh, subintervals here. Again, we're just going to use the six subintervals rather than the twelve. This will make our work a lot less complicated, but of course we won't get as good an approximation because we're using fewer subintervals than in example one. But again, we've got our same f of x equals x squared, or okay. So it's our same parabola. And again, we're going to do m ram on the interval from 0 to 3, and we're going to use six, six subintervals, and you'll always be given this data when you're doing these calculations. So again, the base of each of these rectangles will be 1 half, because if I divide 3 by 6, I get 1 half. And we're going to use the midpoint. Now, the, the uh, fractions get a little more complicated now, because we're, we're dividing our subintervals. We're, we're not using... Uh, halves we're using force because we're going to go right in the middle. Okay, so if we look at this uh, first interval, okay, my base of my first rectangle is going to be one half, and then the height will be the value of the function at the midpoint. So between zero and one half, that's going to be one fourth. So that midpoint will be one fourth. And I probably should put those midpoints in just so you can see. So that's one fourth. And this is going to be 3 fourths. And this is going to be 5 fourths. This will be 7 fourths. 9 fourths. And 11 fourths. And again, 12 fourths is 3. So those are your midpoints. Okay? You can always zoom in if you can't see those. And these will be the actual values of the function at these points to give me the height because I'm using the midpoints. And you can see how we have a little bit of an uh, overestimate and a little bit of an underestimate. These kind of cancel each other out. Okay. So again, this first rectangle, I'm using one half of the base. Okay. I didn't write these in. Shame on me. This is the base times height plus 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 base times height. These are all rectangles. I want to emphasize that, so remember that. Okay, this is my area. It is approximately the sum of all these rectangles. The areas of all these rectangles, pardon me. Okay. So again, f of one-fourth will give me the height of this rectangle. f of three-fourths will give me the height of this rectangle. f of five-fourths will give me the height of that rectangle f of 7 fourths would give me the height of that rectangle, f of 9 fourths would give me the height of that rectangle, and f of 11 fourths, oh no. f of 11 fourths will give me the height of that rectangle. Okay? All right. Okay, so that's, that's again, they, they gave you these, the, the, uh, the numbers there, but I don't think they really explain it using sketches on page two, uh, 266, so hopefully this helps. Okay, so these are my six rectangles, base times height, and again the height is the value of the function at the midpoints of each of those rectangles. Okay, now again I could factor out the common base, which is one half, and then my function is a square function, so I'm going to square it. If it was x squared plus one, I would just have to say one four squared plus one, or three four squared plus one. So you could have different functions, so you have to just calculate those out. Makes it a little more complicated, but that's what you have to do. Okay? But in this case, it's just x squared, so that makes it easy. So it's easy for you to follow as an example. So we've got 1 fourth squared, 3 fourths squared, 5 fourths squared, 7 fourths squared, 9 fourths squared, 11 fourths squared. So that's going to be the heights of these rectangles. And again, I have my common base. And this isn't too bad because, again, we have common denominators. So we got. 1 over 16, 9 over 16, 25 over 16, 49 over 16, 81 over 16, and 121 over 16. And then if I add up all these numerators and put them over the common denominator, I get 286 over 16. And then how you do the arithmetic is up to you. 
I simplify it a little bit. 2 goes into there 1, 4, 3 times, divided by 16. And then I change it to a, a mixed number, 8 and 15 over 16. Now, if this was a non-calculator problem, you would just leave it like that. That's all you'd have to do. Okay? But we can use a calculator, and we can work this out, and we get 8.9375. Now, again, we know, or I, I told you that the exact area under that curve is 9, so we're a little bit closer. But remember, in example number 1, when we use 12 subintervals and the midpoint, which is uh, the, between the three, between the right, the left, and the midpoint, the midpoint's the best approximation. It's going to give you the, the best. It's going to be closest to the area. When we use 12 subintervals and, and that midpoint approximation, we had 8.98. Here we use 6, we had 8.93. But it's still a lot better than our other two, our left uh, RAM, which was 6.875, and our R RAM, our right RAM, which was 11.375. This is still a lot closer. Now these, these figures, again, are on page 286. Okay? So hopefully that will help you with dealing with them. Um, what's going on with uh, the LRAM, RAM, and MRAM, and you need to be able to deal with all those. And I've seen all these, I've seen all different, all three different methods on different practice tests and release questions. So you have to be aware and familiar with all three methods. Okay, so I hope that helps.